Hi oh, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Growing up, I wasn't all that interested in school. I found my classes boring and the way my teachers taught me even more boring. But one subject did begin piquing my interest when I was younger and that was history. The story of our past and a warning of what may come one day in the future. After all, humans are creatures of habit and repetition. No matter how high we build our skyscrapers or how many laws we write down on paper, we are doomed to repeat our past mistakes if we don't learn from them. So how did I start becoming interested in history? Well, through video games and movies. Sure, they oftentimes left out key facts and also added characters that were completely fictional and dialogue that probably never happened. Madness. This is Sparta! But the important thing is those movies and games shoved me towards the right direction. And when I put down my video game controller or turned off my TV, I would continue doing research on the lore and background stories. Unknowingly, I tricked myself into being interested in history. Which is why today I want to talk to you guys about five movies that I think are extremely influential on how we view some of the most important and horrific events in the 20th century. It's kind of hard to comprehend, but at one point in time, Adolf Hitler was just another world leader. In the 1930s, he was seen as a firebrand and aggressive orator seeking to revive Germany. Very few people foresaw the terrible man that Hitler would become, and the horrific war and genocide he would bring to our planet. The Darkest Hour follows the story of Winston Churchill, one of the few men who saw that evil in Hitler. Churchill was a flawed, pissed off, unpleasant man, but he had been born to lead Britain headlong into a battle that the world needed him to win. The film does a great job capturing the feelings and viewpoints of pre-World War II Britain. At the time, Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain was stepping down after his embarrassing impeachment of Hitler. Chamberlain had given parts of Czechoslovakia to Hitler during the Munich Pact of 38. Shortly after, Hitler went on to invade the rest of Czechoslovakia and then Poland. Despite all this, a significant portion of the British Parliament were still considering making peace with the Nazis, especially after the disastrous defeat of the French and British forces leading to the evacuation of the British from mainland Europe at Dunkirk. Hitler had offered terms which would avoid war with the British so he could concentrate on opening a new front against the Soviet Union. The Darkest Hour does a great job at capturing the inner turmoil that Britain and Prime Minister Winston Churchill faced at the time. Peace would mean that the UK would survive, well, at least temporarily. War meant sending another generation into the meat grinder, which was not popular in a country that vividly remembered the last war. But Churchill made the decision not to trust Hitler. He made one of the most important speeches of the 20th century and united the British to make one of the most heroic stands in modern history. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. The British people and Winston Churchill made a very moral and tough decision. They decided to bravely face Nazi Germany all by themselves, putting their whole entire country at risk in order to save the world. And they held on just long enough for the Americans to get their act together and come save the day. It's something I think, especially here in America, we don't give the British enough credit for. While Hotel Rwanda introduced us to the brutal ethnic cleansing that had been happening in Central Africa for the last few decades, Beast of No Nation talks about a very specific problem that goes on in the region, the recruitment of child soldiers. Beast of No Nation is unapologetic, raw, and severely depressing. We follow a young African child whose parents are murdered by armed gunmen after the local government has collapsed. He quickly is adopted by a child soldier brigade led by a charismatic commander slash pedophile who offers small tokens of affection to his young orphans in order to win them over. The film introduces us to the fundamental problem of introducing children who are not mentally mature enough to understand the concept of combat and death. It's a stomach-churning journey into the heart of madness as we see boys younger than the age of five kill and be killed at the whims of a psychopath. Beast of No Nation is almost the natural progression of news coverage of conflicts in this region. When horrific stories, photos, and videos no longer do the job, directors create movies using music, dialogue, and carefully created narratives to stir emotions that you never really want to visit. World War II was the last time the entire planet was at war. Most people in my generation and even my parents' generation don't remember a time when the very ideas of liberty and freedom were on the verge of disappearing from the face of the planet. And no, I'm not talking about the increasing lack of privacy we're all experiencing because of increased government surveillance. 
I'm talking about a true existential crisis where your very life could be taken away from you if you happen to be the wrong religion, wrong race, or simply hold different political ideas. It's something really hard for people to understand, especially growing up here in the United States. The movie Life is Beautiful reminds us of what happens when pure evil actually triumphed. I first saw this movie in 1997. I was barely 10 at the time. I guess my parents thought it was important for me to see this film, and it's actually had a profound effect on my life. Unlike other Holocaust films, Life is Beautiful is extremely focused on what happened to one small family. It's extremely relatable, and all the more effective at making us understand the horror that Jews went through in concentration camps. In the story, a father and son, Guido and Joshua, are kept in the same death camp. In order to shield Joshua from the terrible truth of what was happening around him, Guido tells Joshua that the entire thing is one big game. And he goes through great lengths to make sure that his son doesn't suffer and isn't aware of this terrible side of humanity. <laughs> I remember crying for days after seeing this movie. I couldn't really understand how people could be so cruel. Maybe I was too young to really understand. But that movie has been forever ingrained in my memory. It reminds me that even in the darkest places in the world, you can find courage and beauty in the face of pure evil and insanity. Now, most of us here in the United States have learned about the Holocaust in school. But a lot of us probably didn't learn about the Armenian Genocide, which happened just a few decades earlier during World War I. Sadly, there aren't a lot of mainstream movies that cover the Armenian Genocide, and it's not really well known around the world. For one, the perpetrators of the genocide, the Turkish refused to acknowledge that it ever happened. Unlike the Germans who have spent millions educating their young about the terrible things that happened in their country. That alone should really trouble us, especially with how Turkey is handling their ethnic minorities today. The promise follows an Armenian man who journeys to Constantinople to practice medicine. While there, the Ottoman Empire begins cracking down on the Armenian population. They draft all the able-bodied Armenian men into slave labor camps. Slowly things escalate and Armenian villages are burnt down and their inhabitants executed and piled into mass graves. Many of the scenes in this film from the trains full of Armenian captives on their way to concentration camps and the robbery of Armenian homes by Ottoman soldiers eerily reminded me of scenes from the Holocaust. It reminds the audience that genocides can spring up at any moment anywhere in the world if too many good people refuse to do anything about it. Because this is one of the lesser known historical moments on our list, I do recommend you guys check out this movie. Also, Oscar Isaac does a really good job portraying the main character. Saving Private Ryan took war dramas to the next level. It was said that the film was so realistic that real American soldiers who had experienced D-Day found the scenes incredibly difficult to watch. It's a film that skips the heroics and gets right down to the darkness and suffering war brings. But it's far from being an anti-war film. It truly celebrates the sacrifices of the greatest generation. It reminds us of how when nations fight and leaders point fingers at each other, it's always our young men that suffer the most. It's always the most capable, most able-bodied, and full of potential individuals that end up dying. Saving Private Ryan reinvigorated the war drama genre. Shortly after, series like Band of Brothers would further introduce these heroes of the past in a tasteful manner, respecting the sacrifices these men made, but also explaining us the terrible horrors of war. Besides being important historical dramas, I do recommend every film on this list because they are all in their own way wonderful works of art. Sometimes it's hard to get interested in history, but I think it's really an important thing. Because if we understand our past, it gives us a whole lot of context to help us understand our present world, and perhaps even our future. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and like us on Facebook. As usual, life is a movie, and you guys are the protagonists.